the 1950s, the now legendary race into space began, in which the United States of America and the Soviet Union shifted their strong competition into space. Both sides attempted to gain supremacy in space. Pioneering work was to be done in order to underpin the scientific power of the respective state. Everyone knows about the race to launch the first orbiting satellite into space and that it ended with a Soviet victory by Sputnik 1. Also, the first man in space, Yuri Gagarin, was Soviet. Of course, the fight for the first man journey to the moon is still in the minds of people all over the world today. When Apollo 11 landed on the moon in 1969 and Neil Armstrong took his famous step for mankind, the USA could finally present itself as the winner. In all these competitions in space, however, another interesting subject area fell behind. For Venus was also studied extensively. The Soviets even succeeded in using probes to take photographs of the planet's surface. If you would like to leave Earth with us to travel to the farthest reaches of the cosmos, then show us with a thumbs up, subscribe to Simply Space, and look forward to the videos that will be waiting for you in the future. Let us begin the journey. The History of the Observation of Venus Venus has been known as the brightest star in the firmament since prehistory and has therefore always enjoyed special attention. No matter whether the Maya, ancient Mesopotamian cultures, or the ancient Greeks, Venus has always held an important place in their observations of the sky. The different phases of Venus and their course were first observed by Galileo Galilei. With increasingly better possibilities of observation, it was also possible over the centuries to document various events on Venus such as the transit of Venus in front of the Sun. But all of these investigations could not satisfy the curiosity of the people. It's no wonder that Venus should also be closely examined by space probes. Both the Soviets and the Americans have sent probes to the planet. The Early Probes Flying Past Venus Already in 1961, the Soviets sent their first probe, Venera 1, in the direction of Venus. However, it lost contact with Earth too soon and could not be considered a success. Nevertheless, it's known to be the first object which is considered to be a spacecraft, as it fulfilled all necessary conditions – solar propulsion, possibility of course correction, etc. However, first data of Venus were collected by the Americans and the probe Mariner 2. It showed that the atmosphere has a temperature of about 500 degrees Celsius. The first probe to reach the surface of a foreign planet was Venera 3, but it crashed during the landing and could not send any data. The following probes, Venera 4 to 6, were able to transmit data from the atmosphere, but did not manage to land on the surface. The first successful landing of a probe on Venus. In December 1970, the time had finally come. The Soviet probe, Venera 7, was able to successfully carry out a planned landing on Venus. Contact to Earth was maintained for 23 minutes. Venera 8 was also able to collect important data. The surface temperature of the planet was 455 degrees Celsius. Also, the air pressure and other temperature profiles were created. It was even possible to find indications of clouds on Venus with a photometer. With the help of a gamma steel spectrograph, it was possible to analyze the composition of the planet's crust. But still, no pictures of Venus were transmitted. The first pictures of Venus on October 22, 1975, the probe Venera 9 entered the orbit of Venus. The first artificial satellite on a foreign planet was equipped with spectrographs and a camera. Pictures of rocky landscapes were taken. In addition, it was documented that the clouds of Venus lie in three strange layers on top of each other. Even a digital video was transmitted to Earth. This consisted of nowadays ridiculous looking 6 bits per pixel. The weak data density and the poor transmission ensured that only a few images could really convey meaningful data. Even later post-processing by Brown University could not achieve great success in improving the quality. More or less at the same time, the sister probe Venera 10 was able to land on Venus. Panoramic images were also transmitted from it, even if one of the cameras showed a malfunction. Colored Photos of Venus 
The two Soviet probes, Venera 11 and 12, were equipped with color cameras. They landed on Venus in December 1978. However, it was not possible to create and transmit color photos. The cameras were not able to withstand the high pressure of the atmosphere and no longer functioned. When Venera 13 and 14 were sent to Venus in 1982, there was great hope to finally get color photos. In fact, Venera 13 was able to stay in operation for an incredible 127 minutes on the surface of the distant planet. A small miracle considering the very hostile conditions there. During this time, it was also possible to transmit color photos and X-ray fluorescence images to Earth. With these images, it was now possible to get a very good overview of the conditions on the surface of Venus. Venera 14 was also able to transmit data to Earth for over 50 minutes. In addition to the photos, studies of the seismic activity of Venus were also carried out here. Surprisingly, evidence of such activity was found immediately. Later Probes to Venus in 1984, the Soviet Union sent the two probes, Vega-1 and Vega-2, to Venus. These were equipped with a landing device and helium balloons, which made it possible to observe the atmosphere of Venus over a longer period of time. Thus, wind speeds, temperatures, cloud density, and air pressure could be analyzed. After the landing of the two probes, further data of the planet's crust were determined. No photos were taken during these landings because the probes were not equipped with cameras. In further consequence, no more landings on Venus took place. The Soviet probes Venera 15 and 16 only entered the orbit of the planet and thus mapped large parts of Venus. The same mission was performed by the American probe Magellan in 1990. Only in 2006, another probe was sent to Venus. The Venus Express was launched by the European Space Agency. Until 2014, data from the planet's orbit were collected. Thus, it could be proven that originally on Venus, oceans had existed and hydroxyl occurs in the atmosphere. The Japanese probe Akatsuki originally failed to enter the orbit of Venus as planned. Only through massive corrections could the goal be achieved. Now, the probe is carrying out a wide variety of investigations with the aim of detecting volcanic activity on Venus. The current plans for the future exploration of Venus. The Venera D project is planned in an unusual collaboration between the USA and Russia. This was originally planned in 2003, but has been postponed several times and is now scheduled to actually start between 2026 and 2031. The goal is to cover the entire surface of Venus with a colorful radar. However, the probe will also have a landing device and will then explore the surface of the planet on wheels. India has also planned to send a probe into the orbit of Venus. The Shukrayaan-1 project could be launched as early as 2023, but financing has not yet been secured. The result of the competition in space. So, the race to Venus was clearly won by the Soviet Union. Although the first probe that was able to successfully transmit data to Earth was sent into space by the USA, the first landing on Venus and the only existing photos of the planet's surface date back to the Soviet probes. However, since the Soviets did not share their data with other states due to the Cold War, the exploration of Venus was unnecessarily delayed for a long time. Only in the past decades could the Soviet data, and also the photos, be examined and post-processed by international scientists. However, in addition to the data obtained by the USA and the European Space Agency, a fairly comprehensive knowledge of Venus, its atmosphere, surface, and the environmental conditions prevailing there is now known. However, we still lack much knowledge about this foreign planet. We can remain curious to see what exciting new information other probes in orbit or even landings on Venus can collect. Conclusion This competition for Venus was so exciting at the time when the Soviets had managed to photograph the surface of the planet, an adventure in space which is completely unknown to the masses of humanity. And certainly, Venus is a planet whose exploration in the future will lead to incredible discoveries. How did you perceive the exploration of Venus? What's your opinion about the data and photos? And above all, what do you think the future holds for us? We're very curious about your opinion. Why don't you let us know in the comments and start an exciting discussion below?